trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die, till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I, I die. Join me as we worship. Wow, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Whether you're here in person, whether you're tuned in virtually, we are glad you are here. And uh, it's a great, great day. It's going to be a great day. I need to just start just right off the bat by sharing with you that the sale of the land has been closed, money has been received, the debt on the new building has been paid in full. Paid in full. Yeah! Now I need to celebrate that and we're gonna celebrate that and and, 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 and in order to give that its proper due, you need to know that there was a subcommittee of four gentlemen who really walked this thing through and just kept on making sure that it would happen. And I need you to say thank you to them when you see them, but you need to know who they are. So Paul Snyder, He's home with Rainy Paul. I know you and Rainy may be watching now, so thank you, Paul. Say, they say thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Don Dennison, who's, stand up, Don Dennison, stand up. Thank you, 
Say thank you, Don. <laughs> Mike Davis, set up, Mike. And Brad Deal. Brad and Tanya are at home watching, so I'm looking at the camera. If y'all all, all want to look at the camera and wave at Brad and say, thank you, Brad. And now I saved him for last because he's going to be upset with me because I'm getting into his business. But I think you need to know that Brad came on to this committee as a part of the trustees, also as the professional realtor who had the expertise to get it done, and he committed to that. But what you need to know is that he committed to that and from the very first day said to me, Pastor, I cannot charge my church. He did it and did not accept the realtor's fee. You need to know that's a big deal. It just speaks to who you are as a church. And I need you to know, some of y'all stick your chest out when you're talking about me as your senior pastor, and I appreciate that. But my chest is getting bigger and bigger as I tell folk that I'm hanging out at Klein because we're doing great work. So you needed to know that, and, and you need to celebrate that because it's, 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 it's monumental and it's, it's a great gift. Um, now, for those of you who are like my wife, who now think we got extra money, I don't start that. No, we're not going to talk about that today. Because we don't have extra money yet. But, but that's for another day. We're just going to li live in the fact that this building is paid for. Debt free is how you sit. That's a celebration. All its own, that's worth, it's kind of relishing in, all right? Good deal. You worked on it and you made it happen. Uh, the God Box is going to be to support the Community Life Night, Wednesday night meals, so give generously for that. Um, the only other thing I'll say cautiously is, listen, I know you understand how to do this, but I don't want you to let it slip up on you. There's a little brewing out there now that has about a 90% chance of developing into something that's going to probably cause some water and some wind to come your way. Go ahead now and begin to prepare for that. Go ahead now and begin to think about what you might need uh, to be prepared. Most of us in the room have the opportunity to plan ahead. Don't miss that. Don't let it, miss, don't, don't let it slip up on you uh, because we're in the heart of the season. Do what you need to do to be safe, all right? Good deal. Stand to your feet. Let's worship. I invite you now to remain standing for our call to worship. We are called to love the Lord our God. 
We are called to love the Lord our God. We are called to love the Lord our God. And now please join me as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. and welcome to Klein United Methodist Church. Please take a moment to sign in with the QR code on the back of the pew. Or if you're watching online, please use the link on the page to let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. If you're new around here, we encourage you to fill out the visitor card in the pew and stop by our Welcome Center in the main lobby to find out more about the mission and ministries here at Klein. We also have a virtual Welcome Center located on our website with all the same materials and information that you can get right here in the building. Jennifer Jordan is offering another opportunity to do her Wednesday night Bible study on Monday mornings starting September 16th. If you're interested in participating, please contact Jennifer to save your book. Come join us in celebrating Miss Megan's return to the pew next Sunday, September 15th in between services. There will be a small reception in the lobby with a chance for you to sign thank you cards and express your gratitude for her ministry. There will be a lay servant ministries mixer on Saturday, September 14th from 10 a.m. to noon at Friendship UMC in Porter. If you are interested or want to learn more about it, please contact Pastor Lawrence. One of the most cherished traditions of United Women in Faith is the reading program. Each year, the National Office recommends a list of books for women, children, and youth that will challenge you to open your eyes and your heart to the many ways God is calling you to action. The 2025 reading list has just been released, and to celebrate, our group will be reading five of the children's books together this Thursday evening at 6.30 in room 402. Young moms, grandmothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, all women are welcome and invited to experience these thought-provoking books. The Blue Bonnets are having a family fun night tomorrow night from 6 to 8.30 p.m. in the CLC. There will be a free sandwich supper, tall tales, story time, sing-along, and interactive dancing. All ages are welcome. Our small groups for moms and dads will start back up tomorrow, September 9th at 6 p.m. These groups are for parents with kids of all ages and childcare is provided. Mamas will meet in room 404 upstairs and our group for dads will meet in room 407. Contact the church office for details. Walgreens is set up in room 313 this morning offering flu shots until noon. Stop by and get prepped for flu season. Children's and youth choirs will start today as well. Contact Ashley Driver if you have any questions. Youth choir will begin at 12.30 p.m. and children's choir starts at 2. Stop by the lobby this morning and pick up an Operation Christmas Child box to fill up for children all over the world. They will be out next week as well. Filled boxes are due back on September 29th. Whew, it's a lot. Have a great week. Sitting there listening to you, said the same thing she did. That's a lot. So do I understand that they're offering flu and COVID shots? They are. So it's not just flu shots, but it's flu and COVID. Go get it.
If you don't have insurance, go anyway. Yeah. Got a couple of other things I need you to hear from. Uh, Jim and Kim are going to come and share with us. Wow, they're having free food at the Blue Bonnet Fun Night. Well, there's way more than that. We're having humor with one of the world's best humorous speakers. And, and free food. And there's sing-along with our own Ben Miller. And free food. And there's some line dancing. Everyone can participate. And free food. And we're having interactive dance led by world-renowned Tim Plo. And free food. Can you say anything besides free food? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Free dessert. Well, that's true. All of those things are happening tomorrow night in the CLC. Is there an admission charge? Of course not. It's a fun night, and everyone is invited. Well, we've got to get going. Why is that? I don't have any more lines on my script. Well, we'll see everybody tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in the CLC. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim and Kim, our Blue Bunnies. I'm going to call Bob Smyder to come. He's a part of our foundation committee, and he has some info he'd like to share as well. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, I don't know how to top the news that we already got from uh, Pastor Lawrence a couple of minutes ago, but uh, uh, this is also a, a, a morning, a day of celebration for us on behalf of uh, the Klein United Methodist Church Foundation. I'm Bob Snyder, and I'm vice president and one of the directors of the foundation. Uh, the foundation is a permanent endowment uh, which is designed to uh, distribute 5% uh, of its market value each year to support various ministries of the church. A year ago, uh, the uh, fund had a value of about $100,000, which was an amount that had not changed a lot in a long period of time. Uh, we set a long-term goal, however, to grow the foundation ultimately to a fund of a million dollars. That is a long-term goal. Uh, if we're able to achieve that, and we will one day, uh, the fund will be able to distribute as much as $50,000 or more uh, to various ministries of the church on, on an annual basis. Last year, we established, uh, to help support this goal, uh, the 77 Society uh, to, to celebrate uh, the 1977 founding of the church and to honor the charter members who are still active today and to encourage others uh, to join in supporting the church in the future. In establishing the 77 Society, uh, we determined that anyone who made a donation totaling uh, $1,000 or more during this first year uh, would be recognized as a founding member of the foundation. Uh, of the society. And each year on the church's anniversary, we will welcome new members to the 77 Society. Today, we're recognizing those members who stepped up to the challenge during this first year to become founding members. I'm very excited to announce that 27 families responded to the call this first year. And in the past 12 months, we have raised over $55,000 in support of the foundation. We're here this morning to thank all those who supported the foundation in the past and those who will do so in the future. Now, numerous other folks have made donations to the foundation, and they will be on their way, ultimately, uh, to becoming members of the society, uh, and uh, we look forward to that. So for the moment, for today, uh, I'd like to introduce the founding members of the 77 Society. If your name is called and you are able, please stand and remain standing. And then I would ask the congregation to please wait and we'll have a moment of 
recognition for everyone once the names were called. And so, Lucy Amond, Ben and Eva Gip Bivens, David and Jane Brown, Tom and Sally Brumfield, David and Lynn Krebs, Eric and Dana Crosswhite, Mike and Carol Davis, Don and Janice Dennison, Roger and Sharon Flood, Don and Carolyn Fox, Sharon Foltz, Charles and Sarah Hancock, Joe and Patty Holacek, Jim and Kim Lindenfield, the Louder family, Brendan Peoples and Eddie Castlo, Jane Pope, Don and Becca Porter, Reva Powers, Sue Ryan Snyder, Jane Reich, Ken and Tony Shorey, John and Donna Smith, Bob and Chris Snyder, Dan and Robin Vila, Robert and Jane Wooten, Karen and Juan Zermano. And now we'd like to recognize all of these folks. <laughs> And on, on behalf of the foundation, uh, we thank you again sincerely uh, for your support. Uh, and we also praise God for your generosity. Uh, I do want to remind the honorees that following this service, there will be a brief reception right. over in the main building uh, on the second floor, right in front of the elevators, and hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. You know, he just casually mentioned that we're also in the midst of the time for another church anniversary celebration. This is year number 47 for the Klein Church. I think you're doing pretty well for a 47-year-old. You know, you're getting yourself out of debt. You're saving money for the future. That's, that's, that's about what a 47-year-old ought to be trying to do. What a gift. What a gift. As we all approach prayer time, I know you like I have things that are things you want to celebrate. Like the way God is blessing our church financially and otherwise. But I know you, like I, watch the news and you also know that there is tragedy, there is pain and suffering, there's death and dying. that continues to be among us. Bill Epps passed away earlier this week. We'll be informing you later as to how we will celebrate his life. I was trying to remember if it's been a month or so since his wife Betty passed. and So we need to keep the Epps family in our prayers. I, I keep being amazed that Mike Red keeps showing up. And even though he's got this little walker, he walks faster than most folk trying to keep up with him. And Sandy's just kind of let him go. But we see him here as an evidence of prayers being answered. George Cathcart continues to need our prayers. The family, his boys, grandbabies, and extended family. Brad and Tanya are watching from home because Tanya continues to undergo the treatment to fight this cancer diagnosis and 
I don't want you to forget to keep them in your prayers as well. There are others. I think the last I heard, James Murphy has gone on hospice at home, is it? Kind of palliative care, maybe. Keep the Murphys in your prayers as well. There are others. Bow with me. <laughs> Good and gracious God, we thank you now for the many things that you continue to offer us that offer us opportunities to celebrate. Thank you for the way you love on us, for the way you claim us as your very own, and for the way you just keep showing up. Bless us now as we seek to serve those who are suffering. Bless us now as we seek to be a place of comfort and hope for those who are in the midst of a storm. Bless us now as we continue to seek to be faithful disciples and encourage us as we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand as we worship together.
may be seated. As I invite the ushers forward, I think the only thing I need to say to you about how much is going on at this church is to remember back a few minutes ago to Allison's um, announcements. There were a lot of announcements this morning, and all of those things are about ministries, opportunities, um, ways to participate in the life of this congregation, ways to be served by this congregation, ways to serve through this congregation. All of these, all of these are happening because of your generosity. We're grateful, always grateful for your, for your support. Please pray with me. Gracious and merciful God, we are grateful to be yours. God, we are grateful to be in ministry for you, in your name, being Christ's hands and feet in the community surrounding us. God, we ask that you would continue to bless us, continue to guide us and encourage us and show us your way, the way that you seek for us to serve the people around us, your way to bring light into lives that are heavy and hard. God, offer us opportunities to share the good news to everyone we encounter. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
Today's scripture is from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The word of God for the people of God. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Don't you remember. The message today is designed to encourage the discouraged. Offer strength to the weak. Hope to the desperate. And pick up anyone who has fallen and just can't seem to get back up. This is a reminder that what God Starts, God will see to its end. We're on a journey. And this journey will have hills and valleys. But wherever we find ourselves, we need to remember that God is with us. God is with us on our side. You ever notice how it is that every time you get in what you think is a good place and things seem to be going along well that something comes in, the devil comes in and tries to mess it up? Or when you're in a good place and you're celebrating and something comes up early and the devil wants to throw a wrench in it all and steal your joy. You got to know that's his job. It's a spiritual battle. And if you are not careful, you'll get sucked in. But you must remember that no matter what comes, God is always bigger. The devil wants to make you doubt God. Anybody in the room ever experienced a doubting of God because of how things look? Our Israelites, God bless them, are in this place. In spite of everything that God has done, in spite of all the signs that God was with them, in spite of every miracle that God had performed at the earliest sign of trouble. What do they do? They complain. They complain, George, as if they don't remember. Now, I can say that You know, they looked up and there was a mad army coming after them who outnumbered them and who were equipped. And did I mention they were mad? So it wasn't just a little trouble. I get that. It was a big deal, Ellie. But at the end of the day, it wasn't anything compared to the power of God. And they should have known that. I got to go on. Many of us today find ourselves like the Israelites. God can perform one miracle after another, one blessing after another, one joy 
one, I mean, we can just be in a good place, full of confidence. And then the first time something goes wrong, we begin to complain as if we don't know. And so for the next 10 minutes, I want to offer you an alternative to waddling or being discouraged <clears throat> or finding yourself afraid. When trouble raises its ugly head, I need you to remember. 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 First thing, you need to remember what God has already done. And you need to be assured that just like he did it then, he would do it again. I mean, friends, you would think that based on their history at this point, Plague after plague, 40 years of water and food through the wilderness, pillar of cloud by day, a fire cloud by night that they could travel with. You would think that all of this would have had them to say when the army started to show up, Kevin, ain't no need to worry. God's got our back. And yet when they looked up, they saw the Egyptian army. They failed to remember that God had provided for them for everything they need. And if he had done it up until then, George, why would he stop now? That's not who he is. He says, I've gone through a lot of trouble to save you. I'm not going to quit. You just need to remember. Remember. Now, I got to ask, is that somebody's story here? God has done it over and over and over again. You need to remember. And here's what I thought about. For the Blake Ali's in the room and, and for the limbs in the room and for the babies that are among us, here's what you need to know. They can't remember what they don't know. And they can't know what we don't share with them. So what, I, what am I saying, Nellie? Your grandbabies need to come to your house. And when they get there, they need to experience you sharing with them God's stories. You sharing with them God's sightings. And I'm not talking about what God did for the children of Israel. I'm not talking about what God did for uh, Jacob and John. I'm talking about how he has impacted your life. Friends, here's what it means. When was the last time among yourselves or among others have you shared God's sightings, God moments, Becca, I was blessed to grow up with a praying mama and a praying grandmama and a grandfather. And part of what they made sure that I knew was that whenever I thought things were at their lowest, Renee, they would make me know that God was still in charge. And they would show me, when was the last time you had a God sharing, a God sighting? You got to tell it. You got to tell it. As George Cathart goes through his treatments and stuff raises his ugly head and he reaches out for help or support as needed and it shows up, that's a God story. And so as his boys, Stephen and Jason, get to go through their stuff, one of the things that he owes them is to remind them of who God has already been and who he can expect God to continue to be. It's a God thing. But you got to remember. And don't just remember, but tell it. It's amazing how it is that around my house, we frame everything uh, around the blessings of God and how God's presence makes all the difference. Remember what God has already done. 
Do you need to be reminded that God is a doctor who's more than just a healer? Do you need to be reminded that he's a lawyer? And John, I don't know when you practiced or whether or not you had any litigation, but I don't know if you won every time you practiced, but I'm talking about a lawyer who never lost a case. Do you need to be reminded he's bread? He's water. And Kermit, what I love about him, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I'm just trying to encourage somebody because I don't know where you are and I don't know where you're headed and I don't know what's going to happen, but I want you to know that this you can bank on if you just remember. Remember what God said and know that God cannot lie. Whatever he says he will do, he will do. He says to Moses, tell the Israelites that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have made a covenant with them, and I will give them the land of Canaan. I will deliver them from the hands of the Egyptians. I will free them and take them as my own people. Duff, sounds like to me it's all wrapped up. Gene, it sounds like to me he's already settled it. I will name, claim you as mine. I'll give you a land that you haven't earned. And this little thing that you're going through with Pharaoh and the Egyptians, I got you. I'm going to deliver you. He said that several chapters ago. Around Exodus 6, he made that promise, Denison. And then in Exodus 14, we find ourselves acting as if we don't know what he said. Somebody has heard God about a new house, and yet you don't see no more money coming in. But if God has told you that you're going to get a new house, stop shopping for furniture. And don't worry about how it's going to get done. Somebody knows that there's a new job in the making. Huh? Yeah. If, 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 if the new job has already been promised to you and you don't know where it's going to come yet, start celebrating. Because what God says God will do you can believe it. And listen, I and most of you in this room and many of you that are listening virtually, Ben Bivens, we got enough history to where we should never doubt the old timers used to say, Eric, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. Huh? Huh? Just remember. Just remember. And wherever you are and whatever you need, God can make that happen. Not only do you remember what God has already done and bank on that history, Terry, not only can you hear God saying that I will comfort you in your loneliest hour and believe it, but here's the other thing you got to know. Remember that God will still fight our battles if we let him. God is still the master manipulator. And David it wasn't until I started thinking about God as the manipulator that I began to realize that all manipulation ain't bad manipulation. But as you will see in just a little while, God is going to do what he says as he 
delivers the Israelites across the Red Sea. He's going to do just what he said as he turns the Red Sea and all of that muddy terrain into dry land in order that the Israelites may walk safely across to the other side. But he doesn't stop there because the enemy is still on their case. And so, Dan, once the Israelites have been delivered, that same dry land will now be turned into a raging sea again. And not one, <laughs> not two, <laughs> Not three, but all of the, Israel, of the Egyptian soldiers got drowned in that Red Sea. God will fight your battle. You got to trust him. Songwriter says, oh, Mary, don't you weep? Tell Martha not to mourn. Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea. Friends, it's not always easy, but it's doable. When you find yourself in a place where you feel challenged, when you find yourself in a place where you feel like your back is against the wall, And Lauren, it may not make a lot of sense and there may not be a lot of history that you have that you can pull from for yourself. But baby girl, what I need you to know is you've got a mama and a grandmama who can tell you stories. Help, let them help you. And if they get tired, you know your pastor loves you. Come see me. I will remind you that you are special to God and therefore no weapon formed against you shall prosper and there ain't a thing in the world that can be done about it. Friends, be encouraged. Hold on to your faith and remember, remember, remember. Stand to your feet. Let's get up out of here. As we sign off, and Dolores Patton, I'm saying hey to you all the way in Lufkin. I know you check in on occasion. Hope you're well. I'm going to end like I started. It was my declaration in the beginning. Now I need it to be yours. So repeat after me. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. 
I will trust in the Lord until I die. Gotta say, go be blessed.